So we're going to finish now the uh, problem that we started at the, on the other video. Uh, we were trying to find the uh, radius and the interval of convergence for this particular series. Now we found the radius. The radius is one. That's not going to change. And we found the, the basis or the, 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 the foundation for the interval of convergence. It goes from five to seven centered at six. But what we don't know is what's happening at the endpoints. It turns out there are four possibilities and we don't know going in which one of these is going to be coming out. There is nothing for it. You need to do this procedure we're going to talk about. There's nothing for it. There's no way to just look and know. You must check. It could be that it's the open interval. It could be it's closed at both ends. It could be closed at the left and open on the right. It could be open on the left, closed on the right. Any one of those four is in principle a possibility. What we're going to do is find out which one of those is the case. And so here's what you do. You choose the endpoint. Let x equal 5. Plug x equal 5 into this original expression. If x is equal to 5, then we have 5 minus 6 to the n over n. And we can simplify that because now we know what this value is. This is 0 to infinity. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't do this. I've just I've, This entire problem needs to be done from 1. Everything I did on the previous video needs to be 1. There's a correction. This needs to be 1, not 0, because you're not allowed to have 0 in denominator. So I've, I've, uh, I've, I've made that adjustment here. And so everything in the work on the previous video, this should have been 0, not 1. This should have been, uh, this should have been 1, not 0. 1, not 0. I just said it wrong again. So what do we have here? This is negative 1 to the n over n. Or we can think of that as this is negative 1 to the n times 1 over n. What is that? We know what that is. That's the alternating harmonic series. And we know the alternating harmonic series converges. What if we didn't? What if we didn't recognize this is the alternating harmonic series? We must check this series for convergence of its own right, using all of our knowledge of how to check for a series to converge. So what we have here is an alternating series, and we want to find out if that alternating series converges. That's all we want to know. Does this alternating series converge? So if you substitute these values and you obtain an alternating series, as very often will be the case, not always, but very often will be the case, apply the alternating series test. If you get something, suppose when you substitute in, you get something like this, n plus 1 over 2n plus 2. Maybe that's what you get when you substitute in. Well, then you don't use alternating series tests. You use the limit comparison test. So whatever you inherit from substituting in this endpoint, you check to see if that series converges using your vast knowledge of convergence of series. Almost always, for our work, it's either going to be alternating series or limit comparison test. Almost always. In fact, that's, that's going to be the case for the work that we will limit ourselves to. So we're going to apply the alternating series test. Luckily, you know the alternating series test, or at least you have the principles written down where you can get to them. We have to make sure the non-alternating series part, the non-alternating portion, the non-alternating portion must be bigger than zero. Check. The non-alternating portion must have limit equal to zero. The non-alternating portion must go to zero. Yes, right? As n goes to infinity, this is one over infinity, that's zero. And the non-alternating portion must be decreasing. Is one over n decreasing? Well, there's several ways. To, it's clear, as n gets larger, this fraction gets smaller. There are several ways to make sure this is decreasing. You can just draw the graph. The best way to do probably would be this. The most, uh, I don't know, best, but uh, an official way to do that. We know the derivative is negative 1 over x squared. If you do the derivative of that and simplify, you get negative 1 over x squared. And you have negative divided by positive, which is negative 
And so if the derivative is less than zero, that means the function is decreasing. Yes, it is. So by the alternating series test, this series converges, which means at x equal 5, it converges. At x equal 5, it is a closed interval. If you get converges at that endpoint, it is a closed interval. If you get diverges at that endpoint, it is an open interval. That's all there is to it. So at 5, you generate the alternating series, apply the alternating series test, it converges, therefore 5 is a point of convergence. All right? Let x equals 7. Same song, second stanza. Except, if we got 7 minus 6 to the n over n, you don't get negative 1, you get positive 1. That's all you get. Because positive 1 to the n simplifies to just 1, 1 over n. Now, I really hope you recognize this. And this, ideally, you would simply say, this is the harmonic series that diverges. Ideally, you could just say, this is the alternating harmonic series it, it converges. That would be sufficient. But you would check to see if this thing converges. What if it weren't the harmonic series? What if you got n over n plus 1? Then you would apply the limit comparison test and check to see if this converges or not. All right? In this case, it's 1 over n. And we know this converges. Uh, it's the harmonic series. Another argument you could make is this is a p series with p is not greater than 1. So we know this converge, uh, diverges. This is the harmonic it diverges. And what does that mean for our endpoint? That means you do not include the endpoint. So the interval of convergence is the closed at 5, open at 7. So I don't care which of these pictures you draw, but you represent, somehow you represent the interval of convergence. It's closed at 5, open at 7. That's the procedure. At each of the endpoints, substitute individually, and then check to see if that series converges using your knowledge of how series converge. Usually, it'll end up being either an alternating series test or it will end up being uh, uh, the limit comparison test. Sometimes, if it's very straightforward, you'll get a series that you'll be able to recognize and you'll be able to use that. Sometimes you'll substitute and you get a P series. If you substitute it in, suppose you substitute in and you get uh, 1 over n to the third. That's a P series with n greater than 1, that converges. So whatever you get from substituting that value in, you simplify and see what you work and determine the convergence of that series based upon your knowledge of how series converge.